Hello and welcome to ADTV and today you catch up with us hopefully enjoying a bit of winter pike fishing and in particularly float fishing for them. Now joined by Ollie Harper because Ollie you've done an awful lot <laughs> more of this than me so uh, I'm going to be picking his brains for the next few minutes to hopefully maximise the most out of your session and see what we can learn and see what I can learn as yeah. well. So first of all I've touched on it just then we're going to be float fishing today. Yeah. Why would you or when would you choose to float fish rather than the, the multiple other ways you can fish for pike? Uh, I think float fishing in general is just a, a great way of indicating the bites. Uh, right. If you're a beginner or you haven't done a lot of pike fishing and, you, and you're nervous about it or anything, uh, having a nice bright visual float is yeah. a great way of keeping, you know, alert for that run. It is nice having something to watch Definitely, actually, yeah. it keeps you active. Um, here today we're, we're going to stay mobile as well, right. so a nice quick way of setting the, the rods up and getting the baits into position. Once they are, you've got two nice visual floats there to watch and they definitely dance around when you, yeah, get, when so you get a run. Perhaps a bit um, easier to see a bite as well. Yeah, easier to see a bite and you're not getting false bleeps, you're not taking alarms and, and loads of that and backdrops and, and bank sticks and things like that with, with floats there. You know, you set them slightly over depth and they're fishing. They're, they're a great way of uh, spotting that run. Nice no, it's a great way. It was hopefully uh, we'll yeah. see one go under today. Yeah, never know. <laughs> so while we're doing that, what floats would you use then? There must be a couple uh, of favourites. Yeah, I have, have favourites. Um, I think today we'll set up um, a couple on some pencil dead baits, right. um, just because we're fishing some nice sort of large static dead baits. Which are like the like the long, the long red pencil, and white ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah the pencil floats. Uh, and then we'll probably set up a couple more on some uh, more dumpier style floats, maybe with a dart sight on top. Um, there's mm. a little chop coming through the middle of the lake so they might be a little bit easier easy to see. To see. Yeah, 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 cool. So a couple of your favourites there, yeah, but I'm yeah. sure there's loads of, obviously everyone's got their favourites, yeah, but definitely. two that you've highlighted, look out for those two. And then just quickly talk us through then, we'll go through how to set it up, because yeah. it's actually, I've, I've watched you set the rods up, it's yeah. not that complicated no, for somebody no, who doesn't nice do a lot. Simple, yeah. So start. let's start from the trace end upwards, yeah, just talk us through how you set your, yeah, your rods so, up. Yeah, so a normal sort of 18 inch trace, and then above that I'd buffer bead, yep. and then a nice quick change weight over the top, and then that would, whichever float you're choosing, thread that up the slide line, on. slide that up the line. And then a stop knot or a nice little stop rubber bead, which I've got on today, which are quite handy too, because you you might you want to vary your depth. Um, you can just slide that up and down, and I like to fish mine sort of a foot or two foot over depth, and then uh, just slowly tighten down to the bait. And especially with the pencil floats, they'll they'll just cock a bit like the lift method. Yeah. They'll slowly cock up, and then I just pad a little bit of line off and lay them down flat again. So you're actually fishing them slightly flat. Slightly flat, them. yeah. And then when that pike picks that bait up, that can't help but twitch it up and then it will dance around and, and sometimes sail away which is a nice way of spotting that run. Excellent, well, I'm yeah. liking the sound of this, you keep yeah. things simple, yeah, definitely. that's definitely the way forward with me. And then next, obviously, everyone's the same, yeah. carp anglers, yeah. match anglers, they all do it. Yeah. You must have a favourite bait. Yeah, I've got, I've got a favourite, a couple of favourites when I'm fishing the boards. There's, there's got to be lampreys and eels. Um, but still water fishing like we're doing today. Uh, I bring a real mixture, so some freshwater deads, smelts, mackerels, and some herrings as well are all good baits. So you would perhaps, the same as carp anglers, take yeah, five I'd, different I'd, pop ups, you'd bring different I'd, baits. I'd bring and... different ones, yeah. Um, and then I'd probably put a smelt on one and a mackerel on another. And just rotate uh, it around, it and yeah. you find that certain venues, rivers react to perhaps yeah, a different yeah, bait yeah. At each time. Or even yeah. on the day, you might find that your, your smelt bait is dancing away all the while, and you'll think, right, they're having smelt today, and, and switch it over and have two on smelt. You know, excellent. So, so we're almost set up, then ready to go. You've told yeah, us how yeah. to do it, what we're using, and what bait we're using. We're but using the most it. important thing, it's got to be with any fishing. Yeah, it's location. Is where to put it. Yeah, you got it. it. Yeah. So where would you turn up today? I've never fished this. So I don't yeah. know if you have, but. What are you looking for if you turned up to a venue? Um, really anywhere where the pike can ambush, yep. um, or a pike would be laying up, or a little you know interception po point through some islands or a channel. There's always really good good areas. But at this time of year, it's it's cold. The the, the bait fish have shoaled up quite tightly. Um, we've seen the greaves, greaves working, working today, yeah, so they're a that. good indication of where the bait fish are. I would sort of scatter my dead baits around those in nice nice little corners yep. or overhanging trees and nice never neglect the middle because the fish are moving through they've got fins they yeah, exactly. they'll swim, they swim around anyway, it's not yeah, that it's cold to, to stop them laying up so yeah yeah anywhere you would generally think fish yeah. would be holding so up pretty similar to any other fish yeah. really ambush yeah. points trees yeah yeah and or uh, even a little drop off as it's like just sit under there they can the channel yeah. where they move through 
So, it's and bait area. fish, that is worth a mention. Yeah, you said, yeah. first thing you see was a couple of greaves today, yeah. and you said, there's some bait fish here, and Definitely. I would have just ignored that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a big plus. Where they're working, the pike probably aren't going to be too far away. Cool. Well, so. I'm going to uh, see if you can put that into practice. Yeah, let's see if you can uh, get an amateur yeah. like me to catch that's one. Sure if you can, it'll be a success. Man, so, yeah. let's yeah. crack on with that. Come Well, there we have it. The proof is in the pudding. If Ollie can bring an amateur like me out on one of the first trips and catch one, it proves that them tips he was talking us through earlier certainly do work. So big thanks to that, mate. I'm chuffed on there. I'm not going to hold him. Pike, although they look fierce, they are really delicate. It's all about pike handling. Ollie's been doing this a lot longer than me, and I'd rather see this fella swim back. That's the most important thing for me. So let's get him back, mate. Hopefully, that's inspired you to get out there and give it a go.